I got beat up really bad, and this was something I couldn't cover this time. And kept lying to everybody, telling them that I accidentally fell over. And the story gets old after a while. You get to that point where you're just tired. You just want, you're screaming for help, but at the same time, you don't want nobody to know. Each incident was serious enough to result in broken bones, to result in hospitalization, and she continued to go back. I got called late one evening from the tribal police, a dispatcher, who was reporting an assault victim south of White River, and that she got flown down to Phoenix. From White River to Phoenix is 175 miles. This particular case was a serious assault case. The agent knew the victim. He knew there were many assaults previously. So I was able to collect the police reports, medical records, you know, waiting on the victims return back to the community. When the victim returned, it took me several weeks, if not a couple months, to find her. And that's not uncommon for our, our domestic violence victims, that they just suddenly disappear when they get back. I was trying to hide. <laughs> I remember hiding from Dan a couple of times, seeing him and hiding from him. And Val showed up at my front door with Dan. I never expected that, and I couldn't run this time. I always go in with the mentality of they're not going to share. They have to trust me. They have to see the compassion that I have. The agent took the lead in initiating the discussion. I sat back, I observed, I listened. I said, you didn't deserve this. You did not cause this. This other person felt that they had to control you. That's why this happened. I probably would never have spoken to Dan if Val wasn't sitting there beside me. She cried. She said, no more. I'm done with this. You know, I, I need this person to leave me alone. I held her hand and I told her, you're making a very powerful decision for you. You know, we will help, we will support you. Danielle's case came to my attention in March of 2010. The level of injury that Danielle suffered from these beatings is just, it's shocking. Over the course of their less than two year relationship, he hospitalized her approximately 10 times. She lost the hearing in one of her ears. She had fractures and bruises over virtually every area of her body. I remember that when Dan told me about this case and I started looking through the medical records, the first thing I said to him is, we need to get this guy in custody immediately. He is going to kill her. He is going to kill her. Going through those, those days wasn't easy. It was very hard. It's not easy to just leave like that. And people always ask me, why did you say? I had nowhere else to go. And for that brief moment in my life, I felt like I was loved. That nobody else could love me as good as he did. I remember 
remember her saying that she was really surprised that she found herself in this situation. She didn't think that this could happen to her. She didn't think that she would ever be the victim of something like this. What I often do with victims is to educate them on what a victim is, what domestic violence is, being able to help her understand that she wasn't alone, that she has to support. She was there for me throughout everything. Every, every corner I turned, Bao was there. She explained a lot of the process to me, and it was really hard for me to do in the beginning. I couldn't look at another person in the eye. She actually gave me the confidence to be able to talk to people. My focus is empowering them. We want them to become self-sufficient. Danielle kind of evolved through the process. I think sometimes there's a little lack of trust. You know, I'm not sure if I can trust you to tell you everything, all these most intimate details about my life. I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. Uh, where is this going to leave me when this is all said and done and their case is finished? There was times when I did want to give up. And I was so close to telling Val, you know, Val, just leave it, stop. I don't want to go through with it. Val would always tell me, you know, just another couple more weeks, you know, just, you know, imagine the justice that you'll be getting, what you'll be getting back. She wanted to be involved at sentencing. And that was another few months after he had pled guilty. And I told her, share with the judge what this crime did to you, how you felt, how you feel today. You can do it. You can share all of this. Everything that we worked to to this point, share all of that. How did you come to a place where you are now? I had no family there. He had his entire family there. His mom, dad, brothers, sisters, their kids, their spouses. I had nobody there. It's economics on a reservation. Halfway decent paying jobs are really hard to find. A lot of people, they're living on food stamps, government benefits and that isn't too great. So I knew with her family, they could not be down there for that reason. So we made sure that we sat by her and you know, she'd grab our hands you know, as the sentencing proceeded, um, or we'd grab her hands just to make sure she has that support. I needed their support, their strength. And to have Dan go up to stand with me and stand there, I was so afraid to go up there. I didn't want to at first, but I said, okay, I told myself, you don't go up there, you're gonna show him that you're still afraid of him. So I walked up there and Dan was like, I'll go with you. And I said, okay. The judge ended up sentencing him within the recommended guidelines range. So just between four and four and a half years, in addition to three years supervised release upon his release from custody. To see him, being handcuffed and walked into that back room, I felt like finally, finally, I closed the door and opened the new door. I've seen Danielle go from uh, a victim of domestic violence to become a, per a person of strength. She got her GED. Uh, she you know, bought her first car, had her first home. And throughout this process, she's still calling me. How do I do this? Where do I go for this? And we were able to provide those resources. But at this point, she was able to do it on her own. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. I met my husband, and then we got married two years later, and now we have two kids. And I'm proud of her, of where she is today and how she's able to gain that empowerment to be an individual of independence. Whenever you're proactive, 
in a community and the people know that there's some sense of justice out there, they're gonna feel more secure. <laughs> I know that Danielle's mother was appreciative because I had run into her a year or so afterwards and she thanked me for what happened. And you know, that felt good because you know, it was a lot of hard work. And that's just one case of many that we deal with. I've seen too many domestic violence homicides come across my desk only to find out that the victims had been hospitalized 10, 15, 20 times before, and it's too late. So in that sense, I consider Danielle a real success story, and I applaud her for her strength in doing what she did. Yay! If I had stayed, I probably would have been dead by now. Val came in and gained my trust, which enabled me to tell what had really happened to me. I wouldn't have opened up to just any person. She, she's amazing. <laughs>